Good morning. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an ocarina whistle. Um, it's a little whistle made out of clay with a single chamber uh, with a mouthpiece that you can actually add uh, holes on the side of to create a tune. These are some examples of ocarinas that I've got in my studio. This is one I made that I've burnished and polished and it also acts as a little rattle because I've got some little bits of clay inside there. That doesn't have any holes. This one has got a couple of holes over there and you can do this. Here's one that my son made when he was younger. And you see this hole is bigger than that hole. Uh, apparently the tone is created by the size of the hole. It always was a mystery to me is how people actually tuned their ocarinas to make proper notes. But it has to do with the size of the hole. So we need to drill our hole small and then increase it to change the sound. Also, if your ocarina is small in relation to a bigger one, it's going to have a higher tone. So this one's got a lovely high... It's also got a little hole at the bottom here that you put your thumb on. The tiniest one I have is actually, I think it's Peruvian, and it hangs on a little thread from the back there, a little hole, and you can wear it as a pendant, and it's beautifully decorated and painted. So this one, when I bought it, the chap who sold it to me played a beautiful tune, but I don't know how to make a proper tune. Here's another whistle that was made by me. It's a mermaid. So she gives an eerie mermaid sound, little hole there. It's so much fun making whistles. Now, one way of, uh, one kind of whistle, it's called a water whistle, um, that we're not going to make because it's a bit more involved. The mouthpiece is up here in the tail and then you put water inside and this little hole at the top here. And the air goes through the water and makes a warbling sound. That's one I made. And these two are from Croatia, I think. I think we all have memories of those little plastic ones from our childhood. This one I bought in Greece. It's the same principle, just a different shape. There's a pottery um, in the Cape Flats called Macassar Pottery where they empower young unemployed men to learn how to make pottery and ceramics. And one of the things they do is they make uh, udu drums and they make ocarinas and they play in their own band, which um, is also a fun thing for young men to do. And these are whistles that they make. And you see, they're very similar to these. The only difference really is that it has a big hole on the side here. And with the hole, you can change the tone. You don't actually need another hole on the side. If you open this hole more, you get a higher pitch. So you can actually play a tune very, very well with these. Also, the, the advantage of using this technique is that you can get your hand in here and make the little chamber uh, sharper and cleaner to get your whistle sound. So I'm going to show you this method and this method. If you prefer, you can just make one bigger whistle with your clay or two. So you must just play around and experiment. It takes a bit of practice but uh, it's so much fun. Now, to get the, um, the whistle to work, this is how you do it. This is the mechanics of it. It's, it's, a, it's a hollow ball and it has a little mouthpiece. Now, the mouthpiece, the air from when you blow, must hit directly onto a sharp point there. So that little sharp point is what splits the air and makes the sound. That's how all whistles work. So to get that uh, to function, I've give, there's, you must use a popsicle stick and you stick it in and while it's in there, 
you take your sharpened other piece of popsicle stick that will give you your sharp point for the air to go. That's the crucial part of the whistle. So let's get started and see how we do. Cut your popsicle sticks so that one piece is bigger than the other. Then sand the shorter piece on a piece of sandpaper until it gives you a nice sharp point. Then cut your 500 grams into however many ocarina whistles you want to make and make little balls that you then cut in half and hollow out using a loopy wire tool or else a paper clip. Make sure the walls of your two spheres are nice and even and thin as you can and smooth them with your thumb so there are no protrusions sticking out. Check that the two halves fit each other and then scratch both surfaces with anything sharp and uh, cover each surface with some slip and press them very firmly together. Bond the, the join with a knife or, or something else smooth and then place a tiny little coil all over the join the whole way around the pot and smooth that in. Once your little ball is nice and smooth, prick a tiny hole on the one end and then flatten it down on the, on the table to flatten the one edge. And then you can start making your little mouthpiece that fits around the popsicle stick. Smooth the mouthpiece and make it evenly thick all the way around the popsicle stick and cut off each end so that it's neat. And then fit it to your, uh, your ocarina base by cutting the one end at a slight angle so it fits the curve of the ball of the ocarina.
So the mouthpiece should be a continuation of the flat side of the ocarina that you flattened on your table. Then you need to mark it all the way around for where you're going to scratch and join. So you scratch both surfaces on the ocarina itself and on the mouthpiece. Put slip on them both and then put a tiny coil around that join. Don't worry if the mouthpiece closes up with slip because you're going to press the popsicle stick back through. Once the mouthpiece is nicely joined on, we press the popsicle stick back in to the cavity of the ocarina. You can actually feel when it suddenly reaches the inside of the ocarina. Then take time to smooth everywhere and press the popsicle stick up against the, the flat base and smooth that in with your thumb. So you Press the longer piece of the popsicle stick straight in to the ocarina cavity and then with your sharpened piece of popsicle stick you press up against the wood of the other one that's inside, inside the cavity of the ocarina. Don't make the hole, the first hole, too close to the outside of the mouthpiece. It must be above the curve of the inside of the ocarina. And then you can cut a little square out with your popsicle stick and pull that out and then check that the inside is nice and clean with some, something sharp and then you're going to cut the furthest edge away from the opening of the mouthpiece at a 45 degree angle onto the piece of wood to keep it nice and sharp. While the popsicle stick is still inside, you can compress that sharp edge with the other popsicle stick and check everywhere for little bits of clay that might be blocking the cavity. And slide it out very carefully. And after you slid it out, you'll actually see some little bits of clay that you can take out with something sharp. Always avoiding ruining your sharp edge that is going to be your whistle former. If your whistle is not making any kind of whistling sound, you can put the popsicle stick back in, put a little bit of clay back on that edge and cut again after compressing it. So you can keep on trying again and again. Now I'm going to show you how to make the little whistle with a hole on the side, the same as they make at Macassar Pottery. making a little face so my hole is going to be a smiling mouth but you can do just a simple round hole if you wish. Cut it right through and then smooth it and once you've done that you'll see the join on the inside of your ocarina so you need to smooth that in with your fingers.
Once you've made your mouthpiece, place the rounded edge of the longer piece of popsicle stick against the top above the hole that you've made and draw around it. And that will be the hole that you make for the whistle edge and cut that out. Then you need to cut the area where the mouthpiece fits a little bit lower than the area that is going to split the air. So you just cut a little bit out to fit the mouthpiece in and then you can smooth that edge through the hole that you've made. Spend some time sharpening that rounded edge and thinning it as much as you can so that it splits the air very well. And you can check that it's thin enough by placing your popsicle stick in. It needs to be the thickness of your popsicle stick so you can smooth it on the top, on the outside against the popsicle stick and on the inside against the popsicle stick. And holding it the way I'm holding it there gives you exactly the right angle for the air to be split. Keep the popsicle stick in while you fine-tune the join, get everything nice and neat and smoothed in and thinned out because keeping it in keeps the angle of the mouthpiece in relation to that split edge absolutely perfect. And only once you're very happy with it, then you can slide it out very slowly. Once you've slid the popsicle stick out, you can just check for any blockages and take them out with some, something sharp. made four little whistles and waited until they were all leather hard before I started to decorate them. So you need to leave them for a few hours until they get nice and hard so that you can scratch in and a design will scratch and join with some slip, any, any bits that you want to add on. This one I'm burnishing with a smooth stone so that it'll look like those other ones that I have in my studio. This is my funky little Makassa whistle with a smiley face. <coughs> this little classic one is a fish. I've also got another one that's very small that I made.
this is my little bird ocarina. I added a head that's solid because it's very small and little wings. <coughs> to make the holes you can get different sized drill bits and try whistling each time in between making holes. The bigger ones change the tone and the smaller ones are all different tunes that you can make with the different size holes. Don't test your whistle too many times successively because you, the moisture in your breath will weaken the little sharp splitting edge and wet it. So if you do want to keep testing it, let it dry in between testing sessions. <coughs>